I mean, it is uh, like a prelim, you know, obviously Nagus was the class of the field. Smart of him to take it. Um, I was just focused on myself and, you know, just try to get myself the best position to move forward. So it's all really, there's really nothing uh, else other than, than those thoughts and, and what you saw out there. So tell us, please, tell us about that last hunt. Yeah, you know, um, something I kind of lacked all year, just a little bit of a pop. Um, felt pretty good kind of throughout and then you know I just I just been really kind of flat the last hundred and in a lot of races and uh, you know it's um I don't know I mean I, I kind of been searching for answers the last few weeks and I think it's just kind of like you know me just having a hard talk myself being like look I missed last year not just from racing but training you know um, you know if I missed last year and I was training all year and I didn't race I would still be struggling to get back to you know what, what these guys are doing but after missing on top of racing training as well at 33 you know um it is what it is and so you know every week i just keep putting my head down and putting in the work and um you know just been making steadily improvements throughout the season uh which i'm happy with but you know unfortunately um you know this year a lot of guys are way ahead of where they typically are here in the u.s this time this year so Thank you, man. You yeah, said, of course. You said on a podcast, that video podcast a couple months ago, yeah. your goal is to make it to Paris and ride off in the sunset. Does that mean next year you're planning to be your last season? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, my contract is up uh, end of next year. So that's, without a question, I'll be still fighting, um, you know, for a spot come uh, come trials time next year. Um, and yeah, that's the goal, you know. I didn't really get the chance to start running um, till end of last year. Real workouts didn't start till like early early this spring, end of winter. So, you know, this year I knew that Budapest would have been a little bit of a, um, you know, a lofty goal. And, but you know, of course, the greediness takes over when you, when you get within USA's and you, and you want more than you kind of originally planned in the beginning of the year. You know, if you'd have told me at the end of the, at the end of the summer, or sorry, early summer, end of spring, I'd be at 336 and 148, you know, six months ago. I'd be very pleased and happy with that. Um, but then of course when you do it and uh, you know you're, you're kind of sniffing at making a US final of course you know you, you want a little bit more so um, you know, I just got to be I just got to be happy with like kind of how I'm competing I'm leaving it all out there every every time I step on the track racing racing wise so um, so yeah I mean long story short yeah I'm, I'm still training for Paris and that's the the long-term goal. How have you lost like six weeks ago? Because I think a lot of people still about 336 in LA. They think, oh, center is back. How's it gone since then? It's been good. You know, I have not missed any uh, any days of training. Um, and that's, in my position, that's all you can ask for. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, that, that race was, was a nice um, jump forward in terms of uh, my progression. But, you know, the following week, I ran a 338. And... I, I went into it like really heavy legged. I, I wasn't smart in terms of, you know, just give myself a fair shot. And so I was a little happy kind of, you know, not happy, but I was obviously very disappointed in the race, but I, I didn't feel like I took a step back um, just because I ran a couple seconds slower, uh, slower. Yeah. Are you being coached? Are you coaching yourself now? Or what is that set up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, coach myself, but I've had input from a bunch of people um, that have been in my circle for years now. So, yeah. Now, how many more weeks do we need? Like in order for you to... I guess, like, put yourself in contention for this team and be 100%. If you have a magic ball, man, head my way. I, I've, listen, typically, you know, I could probably predict it a little bit more when, when I was younger. The game changes when, when you get older, you know. It's like, you know, if it took me four weeks in the past to get to where I need to be, next year it's five or six, and the next year it's another couple extra weeks. And so where I'm at right now, you know, it's, it's who knows, you know. I mean, I, I just keep hoping it's the, it's the next week, but... You know, so it goes, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really um, how I would have, I, I guess I've just been so spoiled over the years that like fitness comes not rather quickly, but kind of on time. And, and this year, there's a lot of things that I haven't been through before. You know, I haven't been, I haven't had a major surgery like this. I haven't been 33. I haven't missed a full year of racing or training. And, and, and everyone's freaking good now. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm not discrediting. The, the competition or the field either you know it's like I can sit here and talk about all the things that I've struggled with but at the same time you know everyone's raised the bar um everyone's kind of up their game and um yeah so did it, did it feel weird I guess at the beginning of the race just sort of like at past championships you're the guy who everyone keys off of and commands the, yeah. the pace of the race and today you kind of tried it but you are said basically not today 
don't know if I would say I tried it just because I was in the front. I wasn't trying to control it by any means. I just wanted to be in the front. I didn't know how I was going to go. I didn't know if someone was going to take it, and obviously uh, Yard did. But um, I just I figured it's a big field. It's cutthroat with top three. Normally, most 15s I do, it's top five. Um, so I just want to put myself in the front. It wasn't, I knew I wasn't going to be able to control it and do what I normally did. It's, I'm very realistic with my capabilities and my current fitness. And um, yeah, it's not weird because I have been getting my ass kicked all season. So um, it's not like I've been absolutely in dominant fashion. And I came out here, tried to dominate again, and then got rolled up. It's, I mean, I mean like I said again, I missed all last year. Everyone's progressed and, and gone on to another level, and I'm just clawing my way back. So. I don't think there was any surprises out there for anyone of just kind of how I finished, though. So. I mean, with the way the 1500 is run these days, with a lot of people just going for it from the front, we're seeing a lot of faster times this year than previous years. Does it make it more difficult for you to kind of get back to where you are or close to it? The I mean, I feel like that's, yeah, if everyone was sucking and, and, and no, one, no one had broken four minutes in the mile this year, yeah, of course, it's a lot easier for me to get back. But I mean, the way the event is run, like maybe we see fewer tactical 1500s, I feel like. Glo gl globally, yeah. I mean, that's different than what I was, but in the U.S., no. I mean, I don't know, dude. One of my pet peeves, and it's, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's like a sore subject, but everyone, like all my career, you know, they're like, you only win slow races. I have Olympic trials record. So, I mean, I ran 334 flat here. Like, I can win fast races. Um, so, you know, yeah, like, obviously it was a very pedestrian in Rio, and the, the best guys in the world right now um, tend to be very strong front-running guys. So you're going to see a shift when they're done. The top guys might go back to, like, how the Kip Rups and Solimans are 142 guys. They're going to want to sit in it. It's just whoever the top guys are and, and what their strengths are, you know? Like, like if Inger Britson could win with, like, with a kick, he'd probably not take it out, you know what I mean? But he knows he's physically the fastest guy and the fittest guy and, and that's what you need to do that's why all my career at u.s championships i tend to take the lead like at least with a lap to go if not farther out because like i don't want to be letting it kick for the last 100 meters so long story short yeah all right matt so master tactician matt centrowitz part of giving advice to the guys why are you laughing who are gonna you're a good tactician yeah. no no i was laughing i thought you were before yeah <laughs> who, sorry chris the guys who are going on to face Jakob at the World Championships, how would Peak Centro, the ta Master Tactician Centro, would have tried to beat Jakob? So we're playing fantasy track now. Oh, yeah. um, Thankfully, I qualified. Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've always viewed myself as a, as, as a sub-330 guy. Um, you know, when I, when I ran 330, I ran 149 like a week before that. I, I, I traveled terribly over to Europe. Like I'm always jet lagged for weeks. You know, so for me, me viewing myself as a sub 330 guy, um, knowing the type of workouts I've done to indicate that, I would, I would probably have to go with, with him. And um, Do I beat him? Probably not, maybe. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, that's, but that's probably the best way. I mean, you can't let him, like, I can't simply sit in the pack pull a Cole Hawker in, in, in uh, Tokyo and expect to win, you know, let alone medal. There's just there's just too many guys in that field that are going to go with them and not come back, you know, the Mocketeers and Chariots. So to answer your question, like, if I'm going into the final, I know he's in it. Like, I'm expecting him to go around the field 200 in, get to the front or if not the lead and start squeezing some 56s and 55s and, and, and you have to go with it. But, you know, you, you live and die that way. So that answers your question. Yeah, that's, that's what I would, that's my race plan.